Hey guys, Average Joe here, and I am back with my third load test video. And in this video, we'll kick things off with a load test on the 1090 discs. It, I, for this, I chose disc two and the corresponding machined and cast disc twos from my components. Now, you might notice here from the last video that I have changed this fixture. I went from a horizontal orientation of the shaft to now a vertical orientation of the shaft where we're going to apply force this way on the disc rather than radially outward the way that we were in the last test. And there's a reason for that. Although 1090 discs do fail where the lip will break away. It generally takes a lot of force to do that. If I were to test this in this manner here, like I did the 552s, you would find that I'd need a, a stronger gauge. 500 pounds will not be enough to get this to budge the way that the 552s budged. It will budge and it will fail before the solid metal discs but it's uh, going to require a much stronger force gauge to accomplish that. The primary weakness of a 1090 disc is not this orientation pulling at the lip. It is actually this orientation with force on the face of the disc. And the reason is it's the part of the disc that is not reinforced here around the hub. So there is a metal washer in here along this part of the face, but all of this is still plastic. Everything here is plastic. So the most common break on a 1090 disc is here around the hub. I'm going to set this aside for a moment. This is my only unbroken 1090 disc at the moment. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a parade of discs that have cracks. Now, you have to look closely, but there is a crack developing right there on this disc. Let me see if I can get a screwdriver here. Right here on this disc. I don't know if I can get a good focus on that. But there's a crack along this portion. So that's this one. This one here is a little more visible. You can see it developed all the way around there. Here's another one. This one's even more visible all the way around here. Here's a fourth one. <laughs> I could go on and on. I think you get the point here. You know, this is a fifth. And they just kind of keep going and going. There it is there. So what happens is you won't even notice that this is developing. See how light that is? That's not quite as noticeable as say, let's see, as this one here. That one is a bit more noticeable. But something like this could be developing on your disc and you won't even know it. You'd have to look very closely with a flashlight or take your dumbbell apart to know that they began cracking around this hub. That is the weak point of a 1090 disc. So that's what we're going to test here it, by mounting it in the uh, vertical shaft position. So imagine this being used for hammer curls, uh, tricep extensions over your head, uh, any kind of uh, goblet squats or anything like that. It's going to apply vertical forces on these discs and that is their Achilles heel. So what I've done is mounted a vertical shaft. We're going to start with the OEM just as we did yesterday. Uh, you can see here, let me move this camera down. You can see here that I have kind of a, a lever that I can adjust and raise this assembly up to the um, 
other part of the fixture that will apply the force. And once again, we have our force gauge. So let me raise this up here. We're going to turn this on just as we did last time. Now, this time, instead of tension, we're looking for peak compression. So it's on PC, peak compression. We're going to zero it and then come down here. And I'm going to put this camera at about the plane of the disc. I want you to see what happens here as a force is applied. So the first thing I'm going to do is start moving the lever to apply a force. And when I do, as soon as it starts bending, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to take a look with you at the force that got it to bend. Let me move this camera up a little bit. Oh. Okay. One moment. Okay. So I'm going to move it up. And then as soon as it starts bending, I am going to take a look at the force up here. So let's apply the force. Now you can see it's already flexing. Look very carefully right here. And you can see that flexes. How much? It flexes at about easily 60 pounds of force. Let's come back down here. And let's apply quite a bit more. So you can see, you can get this thing to flex to the point where just enough force, and by the way, this is on an unbroken uh, 1090 disc. There are no cracks on this one. It will develop cracks from this kind of force. Over time, or even just one time, if the conditions are right, it will begin to crack because of the forces on the outer lip. But we apply the force here, and look at how much it deflects. Now imagine for a moment that you have a plate on your dumbbell and your disc is flexing like this. That is going to allow a plate to come right out of your dumbbell. You're doing an overhead exercise. You're doing any kind of, uh, you know, uh, goblety squat kind of uh, uh, tricep extension exercise. And that's the forces involved that are going to apply just enough force to be able to get this thing to flex. Now, once they start cracking, it takes less force, but let's take a look up here. About 166 pounds of force can deflect this a few millimeters. Look at the head of this Allen um, uh, right here, this bolt, the head of the Allen bolt, and watch me go right down to it. Oh, it cracked. I just got it to crack. So let's take a look at that. There's the crack, fresh crack on that. 174 pounds. So at just 174 pounds, this, is, this disc is now lo no longer safe. At this point, this is super easy to move. It doesn't require as much force to move it. In fact, what we'll do now, now that that's cracked, okay, we're going to zero this. Oh, let's see if we can. There must be a slight force on this one sec here. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's the weight of the fixture. Okay. So let's come here. And now let's just apply some force and we're going to reconnect it with that head of that Allen bolt. Okay, same thing. I just touched the Allen bolt. Now before, that took 174 pounds of force. Now, with the crack, it only took 128 pounds of force. The crack basically has already weakened this disc. So once your disc cracks on your 1090, you're already unsafe. It's become now a uh, you know a potential safety issue if you continue to do those exercises and you don't replace this disc. And the crack, let me see if I can get this off. 
here. I'm going to have to drop the fixture a little bit. Hang on one sec here. I am uh, loosening the fixture to lower it. So I can take this off and we can take a look at the crack that developed. There it is. So it just developed a crack about halfway around the disc. And this disc is no longer safe, as is you know the, the same situation with all these other discs. These are all no longer safe to use. Uh, you know, you need to replace them. Now, you can replace it with another one of the OEM discs for sure. Uh, you're going to end up in the same boat if you uh, do exercises that apply those forces. They don't make 3D printed versions of this because this is a metal reinforced disc. There is no 3D print shop out there making a 3D print printed replacement for 1090 discs. It would be probably extremely unsafe to try to use a 100% plastic disc with a 90 pound dumbbell. As it is, it's unsafe to use it with a 52 and a half pound dumbbell as I showed in the last load test video. So let's take a look now at the cast disc. and load this up and then we're going to come up here zero that out the by the way when you see that it's kind of non-zero here there's always a light tension or compression force occurring when you hang these fixtures it seems uh, i very rarely get it to go to completely to uh zero Oh, and it's telling me low battery, so I've got to hurry this up. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to load test this now. Let me raise this up. Oh, one moment here. I dropped the adjustment knob. Okay. And let's test this now. So we're going to apply our force. And you can see some deflection there. The deflection is occurring at about 217 pounds. About 60 more than the plastic. Let's see if we can go more, more, one sec. Now we're at 455. Let me see if I can get this to go to at least the max of the gauge. Wow. There we go. Okay. <laughs> We've now exceeded the limit of the gauge, which is uh, a 500 pound force gauge. And as you can see there, there is no damage. I'm going to take that off of the jig. I need my one moment here. <laughs> my little plastic handle on the uh, stand broke off. Mark 10, you guys got to do a better job with your, your little plastic handles. I just had that break on me, but that's okay. We can still do this. So now let us lower this. Gotta love when a thousand dollar stand has a little plastic knob. Looks like I've got another product to make. <laughs> uh, but you can see here there is no crack 
anywhere on this. It's not going to crack around the hub, even at over 500 pounds. So let's take a quick look at this one before the battery runs out on the on the um, gauge. And this is the uh, machined one. And this machined one is even stronger than the other one. So we're going to have no problem here. Uh, let's first go up here. We're going to zero it out. Come down here. And let's apply some force here. And that's how easy <laughs> in a few seconds I was able to apply over 500 pounds of force. And uh, this one, you get that, you know, ever so slight initial deflection. And uh, beyond that, you're not really going to get it to bend like the uh, the plastic discs. And, you know, over 500 pounds of force on it. So let's take this off and lower this platform. Take a look at the disc. And there you go. Um, no cracking or anything like that. So, you know, these are designed to take quite a bit more force in areas where the OEM discs crack. On the 552 discs, it's both the bending this way and also the lip cracking this way. And on the 1090, it's primarily, you know, the, the uh, deflection this way that it's, it's bending in. So, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, the... Um, this is the third load test that I had done. If I uh, charge up this battery and uh, maybe maybe tomorrow, if I have some time, I can do the 552 uh, load test in this direction, the uh, vertically oriented shaft, and uh, and show you that as well. But of course, it's those are going to be even more weak than these these uh you know i was able to apply a hundred plus pounds of force to deflect them but uh these i suspect will begin to bend at much less than that uh but there you go this is the uh 1090 disc load test and thank you for watching i hope you found it helpful if you did please subscribe to my channel and uh, i will see you guys in the next video